So my simple question in asymmetric volatility is that. So uh, can we say that volatility as a result of positive news is similar to the volatility due to negative news. So now I'm uh, simply asking you a question. Can we say, can we say the uh, volatility as a result of positive news is similar to the volatility due to negative news? Now I am telling you many cases. If you heard a positive news, you will not respond as you respond to a negative information, right? So it is a human nature that when a positive news comes, he responded like this, right? The response is like like this. But when you when a negative news comes, when a negative news comes, right? The positive, the, the reaction is like this. So it is a normal reaction and it is a shocking, it is a shock, right? So it is a human behavior that we respond very high to a negative news. And in some cases, the negative news may lead to the heart attack also. But in case of positive news, I have not seen any heart attack. Uh, but because it is a normal reaction, normally people give normal reaction to a positive news, but very dangerous reaction to a shock, negative news. Now the question is that how to capture this, how to prove it, how to, how to prove it statistically. So when we are having a model called T gas model. So to check the asymmetric volatility, we are having a system called T G A R C H or this model is also known as J G R model. So I will check whether it is G J R or J G R something like that. Uh, this is threshold large model or it is uh, actually I am confusing here. It may be uh, G J R. So let me check this and uh, what is the actual GJR, yes. So it is a uh, GJR Jagannathan, some, uh, some model. So let me uh, remove this GJR model. And what this GJR model, they create a dummy. They create a interaction dummy. Interaction dummy. Now, what is this interaction dummy? They, they calculate uh, the error terms, right? The error terms. And uh, if it is positive or it is negative. So if it is positive, we call it one. And if it is negative, we call it zero. So this is a dummy variable of the Array term, right? And we give uh, focus to the negative. Negative. So when the error is negative, we call it one. And where, when the error is positive, we call it zero. Now this dummy variable is inserted in the equation of uh, Gauss model. This C T square equal to alpha plus beta one E T minus one square plus beta 2 e t minus uh, no, sorry this is the sigma t minus 1 square plus now we are introducing this dummy variable multiplied by the et plus error okay you can put it t the dummy variable et right so now we have to check this beta 3 this beta 3 
if this if this beta 3 is significant it means volatility is asymmetrical volatility is asymmetrical and the second second conclusion we can draw here if beta 3 is positive it means negative news have more impact negative news have a uh, more impact on the volatility more uh, we can write more volatility if this beta 3 is positive it means negative news will have more volatility as compared to positive news so now i am showing you the uh, the jgr model how to apply this so we are having the model a spot is the dependent variable we are applying arch 11 uh, yeah, uh, arma1 model and you can see the option called threshold order 1 0 if you put it threshold order 1 if you put threshold order 1 the gauge model is converted into the jgr uh, gjr model or t gauge model you can you can also see here t gauge model so just click okay now you can see that uh, we are having the beta 3 here this beta 3 is found to be uh, here uh, the coefficient of residual so if i write the equation the equation is like this sigma t is square equal to alpha plus beta 1 the first equation is et minus 1 the second equation is beta 2 here beta 2 is the uh, the residual when a residual is less than 0 yani et minus 1 when this et is less than 0 less than 0 means negative so it is just representation of the dummy variable when error is negative and plus the beta 3 sigma t minus 1 square so this is my asymmetric term and beta 2 is found to be uh, 0.092 with probability value 0 0.000 now what is the conclusion we can draw from here we can draw the conclusion uh, that the impact of negative shock is on 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 volatility the impact of negative shock on volatility is significantly higher because it is positive if it is negative we, we will write lower is higher than the impact of a positive shock on the volatility so th this is the conclusion we can draw from here because my beta is significant and positive positive and significant so my conclusion is that the impact of negative shock on volatility is significant significantly higher than the impact of the positive shock on the volatility so this model is known as the t gauge model or the threshold gauge model so i hope it is clear now and uh, after this t gauge model we are having the most popular model that is called e gauge model this e gauge model is exponential gauge model so now I am going to explain you what is the meaning of exponential gauge model. Okay. So I hope there is no problem in understanding the concept. Uh, beta 2 we have to check. If beta 2 is positive it means negative news have more impact. If beta 2 is negative it means uh, positive news have more impact. And uh, if it is significant so you 
know that the impact of one news is significantly higher than other news. So this model is known as T Gauss model. Okay. So now the next model which I am going to show is E Gauss model, which is the most popular Gauss model. So if we click on the E Gauss and put it zero back, only apply the E Gauss model. So we are going to apply now E Gauss model. E Gauss, right? So I will explain you the E Gauss also. Let's click OK. And uh, we are having the E Gauss model here. So let me write the E Gauss model. Uh, the E Gauss model is the model is mentioned here. We are having the absolute value and Gauss model. Okay. Uh, basically, we have to put one here because asymmetric effect is not coming in this model. So let me put one here. Now I think I'm getting the full model. So this is the full EGARS model. Okay. So what is this model? The model is, the model is very lengthy. So I have to write it if you want to uh, understand the model. The dependent variable is now log of the uh, sigma t square. So we are taking the log of the log of the dependent variable. Now alpha plus beta one, and it is e t minus one. This is the modulus divided by under root uh, sigma t minus one square. Right. And this is the square plus beta two. I'm I'm making the model from here. Beta two residual minus one e t minus one upon uh, square root of gauss minus one square root of sigma t minus one. Okay. The third is we are having 0.98, which is very significant. Beta four, which is the log uh, sigma t minus one square. So this model is the uh, representing the Gauss model, E Gauss model. In E Gauss model, this is known as Gauss term. This is the known as the guards term and this, this part is uh, representing the impact of the news. This is simply the impact of the shock because ET minus one is representing the shock. So this impact is divided into two parts. This is part number one. And this is part number two. This part is known as size effect. The size effect of the news. And this effect is known as sign effect of the news. Sign effect. So there are two effects of the news. One in terms of the magnitude. And this is in terms of the sign. Right. Now let's take the... Um, one by one. This is my uh, B1 is my C5. It is found to be 0 0.1154 and a star means it is significant. Now what is the sign effect? Sign effect is minus 0 0.067 and a star means significant. So Gauss term here 0 0.98 and it is found to be significant. So how to conclude? Because all the three are significant, so all the three are significant, we have to interpret all the three beta. So this beta is saying that the news, the shock, the shock have significant impact on volatility. 
impact on volatility now what this means this means that if error term increases the volatility decreases the uh, if error term increases volatility decreases so there is a inverse relationship there is a inverse relationship between between error ei and sigma t square right so if error increases error increases means you are having the positive error so positive error means positive news so it means when you are having the positive news the volatility in the market will decrease so we can also write positive information will decrease the volatility decrease the volatility so this is the interpretation we can coming from we can draw from the beta 2 and gauss effect is indicating the vol persist volatility persistence is very high volatility persistence is is very very high means if the market is volatile it will the chances is very high that it will remain volatile for many days right so in this way we can analyze the short, uh, the impact of the news which we divided into size effect and the sign effect and uh, persistence level we can analyze with the help of gauss model so uh, this is this model is known as e gauss exponential gauss model okay so i hope uh, you now understand the concept of the e gauss model after that i am explaining you another version that is called m gauss model okay uh, so you can if you want to click picture of it picture because this clarity you cannot have in any of the book i can guarantee you <clears throat> okay now i am going to the next part now this uh, model now i am going to show you is the mean uh, gauss model so just go to first let me run the model first and i will explain go to the estimate so we are having a option called arch m arch m you can see here arch m let's go back to the gauss model put it zero and here i am uh, i want to see the effect of variance so i am putting here the variance right so just see i am putting the impact of the variance so we are having three options here we can apply on the standard deviation we can apply on uh, on the variance and we can apply on the log variance so i know that uh, as a mathematician i know that the impact of the variance is the highest so i am taking the variance so let me do it okay okay now <clears throat> my question is that so let me explain you this this concept so my question is that uh, can we say research question is that can we say that uh, returns and volatility are related to each other are related in finance there is a very high uh, there is very famous saying everybody say that high risk leads to high return if you take more risk you will get the high return so can we say that returns and volatility are related so now what we are doing we are applying the return <clears throat> return of a portfolio is equal to this is return return of a portfolio is equal to alpha plus beta 1 uh, we put y t minus 1 here plus beta 2 et minus 1 here and i am also putting beta 3 which is the variance 
which is the variance, right? So this model is known as M Gauge model. <clears throat> M Gauge model. Now, what I want to see whether the impact of variance on the return is significant or not. I just want to see whether the impact of variance or the volatility on the returns is significant or not. So my the answer is that the probability is insignificant. So what is the answer? Almost every research paper find out that no, there is no significant relationship between variance and return. It is YT or you can say it is RT. So there is no significant relationship between the variance and the returns. So this model is known as the uh, M Gauge model. M Gauge model, right? So I have explained you uh, four or five models. Like I explained you uh, Arch model, Gauge model, T Gauge model, E Gauge model, M Gauge model. Actually, there are there are twenty four type of model, and I know that neither I can explain you all the twenty four, nor you can adjust or digest all the 24 kind of models but let me explain you the extension of those so that in future if i uh, launch some workshop you can attend that so i am explaining the what other kind of um, uh, volatility we can study so number one we can identify the impact of an event on the volatility. Second, we can also identify the seasonality in the volatility. Seasonality in the volatility. Then we can analyze the impact of uh, short term and long term volatility. There are volatility can be also divided into short term or long term volatility number 4 uh, there is a concept of volatility spillover <coughs> volatility spillover so we are having a, a very famous model that is called dynamic conditional correlation model DCC dynamic conditional uh, correlation. We popularly call it DCC model, right? So uh, we are having some uh, models like BE KK uh, BE CH back back model, which is also there. So these are some of the extensions of. Uh, volatility and uh, when i made my notes so i uh, make notes of 24 type of uh, cards models so these are some of the popular models which are coming into my mind at this time uh, which you can study after that okay yeah this this is one another exogenous guards model uh, so we i also know that there is a exogenous gauge model and uh, another you have heard about the VAR gauge model when we when we combine the value at risk in the gauge model so these are the different type of uh, uh, extensions of the gauge model which we will discuss in I remember that uh, I conducted a separate workshop in uh, volatility. So where I conducted all the all the models in full one day. So these are the future of the volatility. Future means you will study in future. And uh, 
so this is the topic which i want to dis uh, discuss today and uh, now uh, if you want to me if you want you to repeat me anything i will repeat <laughs> 